Hi there, welcome to another video tutorial on factoring strategies here. I decided to record a quick tutorial on uh, just applying factoring strategies in general to an assortment of factoring problems. So uh, I've, I've done three videos so far on the different types of factoring strategies. In this one, what we're, I'm going to do is just kind of throw some factoring strategies at you. And I'm just going to show you how to sort of identify the best uh, course of action for a factoring problem. Uh, this is probably going to be the most useful video as uh, any tests or any sort of problem sets that you, that you encounter usually do not tell you which type of factoring to use. Uh, so I'm just going to start by going over a nice little flow chart that I've developed for factoring problems. This is sort of like the, the line of thinking that you want to use when you approach a factoring problem. Okay, so first question you want to ask yourself uh, is, is there a common factor in the expression that you're being, that you're being given? Okay, if there's a common factor, always, always, always remove it first. Okay, once you've removed your common factor, next thing you want to ask yourself is, is it a trinomial? Do I have a trinomial that I'm being asked to factor? Okay, if you do have a trinomial, remember trinomial has three terms. If you do have a trinomial, you want to, you want to check and see if your a value, the coefficient in front of x squared, is equal to 1. If so, you're going to use the simple trinomial method. Uh, if you do not have an a value of one, you're going to use the tricky trinomial method. Now I've posted two vi or a video on both of these. Uh, it just I think it's called uh, trinomial factoring. Take a peek at that if you're uh, just want a quick review on trinomial factoring when a equals one and when a does not equal one. Okay, so now we're going to go back to our flow chart. We're going to go over to this side and we're going to answer no to this is it a trinomial question. So if it's not a trinomial, you want to check is it a difference of squares. I've also posted a video tutorial on difference of squares factoring. Remember, you've got to check, is there a difference? Can you take the square root of your two terms? If you can, you've got a difference of squares. Okay, if, if you don't have a difference of squares, uh, there's a bunch of other types of factoring strategies you can use. Uh, really, just check and see if you can factor by grouping. Remember, grouping is just, you know, taking uh, terms and, and grouping them based on their similarities and common factoring. Okay, so that's really all, like, for the most part, the, the factoring strategies that you're going to see in grade 10 or, or maybe even grade 11 uh, math, depending on where you are. Uh, so that's, you know, something to keep in, in, in handy um, as, you, as you approach these factoring problems. All right, so I'm just going to go over a couple with you. I've got the flow chart handy off to the side here. Uh, so first thing, remember, you're going to ask yourself, is there a common factor? So taking a peek at this expression, you can see there is, in fact, a common factor of 3x. I remove that 3x by common factoring, and I end up with this expression here. Okay, I know that was quick, but if you have any questions about common factoring, I'd suggest just taking a peek at my common factoring video tutorial. And that'll sort of explain the process that was, in, that was used here. In this video, I just kind of want to show you how to select the right, the right strategy. So this second example here, uh, again, we're going to go back to our flow chart check for a common factor. There is no common factor here. I can't take anything out of each of these terms. Um, the next question is, you know, is, is the trinomial? You can see it is in fact a trinomial and in this trinomial happens to have an a value of one. So remember with tri trinomial factoring you're going to try to find two numbers that add to get your b term while also multiplying to get your c term. Okay, so we need to add to get six and multiply to get nine you'll see very quickly that your two numbers are three and three. Uh, and using the shortcut, we, we know that these, these uh, values here, we're just gonna place after our x values. Uh, we're gonna have two binomials. You know, you could see this, this expression written in this way uh, without that exponent, but you know, if I've got two binomials multiplied by each other and they're the same binomial, I can just simplify that by writing it as x plus three squared. Okay, last example here on this slide, uh, I've got x squared plus 36. Go over to your, your flow chart. There's no common factor. It's definitely not a trinomial. There's only two terms. And it, it also is not a difference of squares. So this thing, you can conclude, does not factor. Uh, remember in, in my difference of squares video tutorial, I showed that you know this is a parabola being shifted up, uh, in this case, by 36 units. There, this thing has no x-intercepts, therefore we cannot factor it. Okay, another couple examples here. Uh, this first one is a, kind of a strange expression. You've got two variables involved. Uh, don't be intimidated by this. Just jump to your, your flow chart. Same thing, check for a common factor. In this case, each of these terms have a y, so we're gonna common factor out that y. 
really simplifies this thing. You know, this is now this is just a, a, a nice trinomial. So you're going to follow your flow chart. It is a trinomial. The a value does not equal one. So we're going to use our tricky trinomial method. This one, remember, is very strange. If you have questions about this one, definitely take a peek at that video tutorial I did on, on trinomial factoring. So remember, you're going to use the same sort of method to begin with. You're going to find two numbers that add to get your b term while also multiplying to get your c term times your a term. Okay, that's the main difference between simple tri trinomial factoring and tricky trinomial factoring. So we're going to add to get negative 3, and we have to multiply to get negative 40. So the bigger your numbers get, sometimes the harder it is to determine your two numbers. But remember, always start with factors of 40, right? So we're, we're going to look at two numbers that multiply to get negative 40. I'm going to say just negative 8 and 5 right off the hop. Uh, and, and you can see that those numbers also add to get negative 3. Okay, so that, that process kind of involves involve some practice. So if you don't get it right away, that's okay. Just do a couple examples and, and build up that skill. So remember in, this, in the tricky trinomial factoring method, I showed you a shortcut that I really like. You start by writing out your, your two numbers that you decided on. Remember, this is kind of off to the side. And remember, you're going to divide those numbers by your A value. So in this case, 10. Before we proceed, we've got to reduce our fractions to lowest terms. Okay, so we do that. And this is where that really bizarre step occurs, where we just take our fractions and we rotate them 90 degrees to the right. Uh, and and we, we end up with 5 and negative 4. Uh, we take this guy and rotate it to the right. You end up with 2 and 1. Uh, and remember, those end up being your, uh, your factors. Okay, sorry, I forgot my y there. Um, but you can see here I've got 5, negative 4. Remember, we just plop an x with our first term and we plop an x with our first term our first term and we end up with a, a nice factored expression okay if you're a little confused about what happened there definitely take a peek at that video tutorial this is a nice shortcut that I learned that I, I've used ever since and I find it very very useful it, it definitely saves you some time as opposed to using uh, the decomposition factoring strategy all right last one I'm going to do here checking for a common factor first you can see that there is in fact, a common factor of 16. Okay, if I if I take 144 and divide by 16, I end up with a nine, right? So there was a common factor hiding there. We do not have a trinomial, but as it turns out, we do have a difference of squares. Okay, initially, you, you might have looked at this thing and said, oh no, this is definitely not a difference of squares. Uh, I can't take the square root of, of these numbers, uh, which in this case, you actually can take the square root of these numbers, but it's still a good idea to, to common factor first, okay? So we're going to apply our difference of squares factoring strategy, which, remember, just says take the square root of each term and write it um, inside the brackets in this way. Okay, and there's a video tutorial on difference of squares factoring uh, if you want to take a peek at that. If you did not remove your, your, great, your greatest common factor first, you would not have the fully factored form at the end. You would have had to remove a common factor. Uh, that works too. I, just, I, I swear by this flow chart, always checking for a common factor first definitely simplifies your life uh, greatly. All right, so that's the end of this video tutorial. It was a quick one. I just wanted to kind of go over that flow chart with you. I find this very useful. Feel free to take a screenshot of that and use it in your studies uh, and, and just keep it handy. Uh, it definitely helps when, when you get to the point where you're kind of confused about when to use which factoring strategy, which is really what I find to be the, the most difficult part of factoring problems. So I hope this helped. Uh, and good luck with your studies in quadratics and functions, and thanks for watching.